Good evening, everybody. Right, two seconds. <laughs> Prepped as ever. Prepped as ever. Good evening and welcome to Dark Shed Live Season 2, Episode 9. It's Monday the 26th of October. Hope you're all doing well out there. Uh, it seems like quite a while since I've done a broadcast. Obviously, my first Tuesdays of every month has gone out the window. But uh, I did do two last month, so... What are you going to do? Uh, please say, during my last one, I had Ethan Moses on from Cameradactyl, uh, who had a Kickstarter campaign going, which is why that special one out of sync. Um, and that has been successfully kickstarted, which was for the Mongoose, the automated 35mm uh, digitizer, which is great news. So fingers crossed, everything's going to plan for him at the moment, and uh, we're keeping a close eye on that. Right. Um, what's been happening? Right. I've been pretty busy since last time. Um, and I've got three things to talk to you tonight about. The first one is a personal thing. It's what I've been working on, which is my zine subscription and patronage scheme. Uh, then I'm do a little talk about medium format film. And then I'm going to do some split grade printing. So I've got really busy and uh, varied content tonight. So let's get started. Um, just a bit of housekeeping first. If you're watching live, thank you very much for joining. Uh, place any questions in the chat box, which is, I don't know, it's, it's probably that side. Um, and if you're watching this on catch up, place your comments below. Um, I'll put the timings for each topic in there as well, so you can skip through to to whichever bit you're interested in, or just watch it all. And of course, don't forget to press the subscribe button. So first up tonight, I'm just going to have a quick chat about um, my personal projects, and that is my patron and subscription scheme that I'm currently uh, I've recently set up and just started. Um, so why am I doing this? Um, <laughs> uh, fundamentally, I'm fed up with social media and posting images online and them just disappearing into nowhere and working on projects and sporadically posting stuff. And I wanted to try and start to pull all my work together and give myself a bit more direction and a platform to start publishing on. Part of that is what I'm doing here with my uh, YouTube streams, which is what you're watching now and kind of a bit more tutorial and behind the scenes based. Um, and it's just kind of regaining control as well. And you can, you can read all about it on my website. I'm going to great detail on uh, my reasoning behind it all. So what it's mainly centered around is a quarterly zine called choosing and losing, which in the last few days has come back from the printers. It's here. Um, it's a 48 page zine all printed on recycled paper from mix and print if you really want to know that um and uh, the first issue is called tear it all down which is a theme about destroying everything and starting again fresh and the potential and the unknown of what it will grow from which is what i'm doing at the moment um you can check out my website for the full details on it uh, let's just have a quick look and go through it. So as I said, it's all centered around the quarterly zine. All subscribers get that um, from the base tier upwards and you get other perks as well. So there's uh, vouchers and exclusive website content. The higher up your tiers go, there are vouchers for prints from my shop. Um, and discounts. So please do go check that out. All your support is greatly appreciated. And for everyone that's already subscribed, thank you very much. Uh, your zines went out in the post today. So there we go. Um, that's enough of that, isn't it, really? <laughs> what am I going to talk about next? Right, so tonight uh, I'm going to talk about the um, medium format. <laughs> what am I talking about? 
Medium format film. A uh, conversation, came, conversation came up recently with somebody about how they load their medium format film into a reel. And I need to swap microphones. Um, I thought there was only one way to do this. This camera's not going to work, is it? There we go. Um, but it turns out there's a couple. Okay. So I thought I'd just do a quick overview of uh, not that one it's going well tonight isn't it uh easel there it is i thought I'd just do a quick overview of uh what medium format film is and how to load it different ways of loading it onto a reel so medium format is also known as 120 120 is not the size, it's just a designated number reference that was originally defined in 1901, I think. Um, and as with all roll film, the size of the frame on the emulsion is determined by the camera lens combo and not the film itself. Uh, medium format cameras are available in frame sizes or aspect ratios from 6x4x5 by by to up to 6x24, I think. Um, and these numbers do represent the size of the frame um, and our centimeter sizes. So let's just take this roll out of here. There you can see it. This is an extremely old expired roll of film that's been through various airport scanners. So I'm gonna sacrifice it for tonight. So this is what it looks like when it first comes out. Let's just change the focus on this. Okay. This white paper here is the backing paper to the film. So you take the, ta the tape off like that, and then you're ready to load it. Now I'll just show you what's inside as you unroll it out. You've got backing paper for a while, and there the film starts like that. Okay. So let's just dummy roll this into the back of the camera. Pretty tricky to do when you've got a camera in your face. Okay, and most cameras, you're aligning these arrows with a marker. So on this one, on the Mimir 7, it's in the center. Close it off and keep winding until it stops. Okay, so I'm just going to fire off these shots. Um, let's just put it in that just to finish the film. Have a quick look if anybody's here. Good evening, Tara, and good evening, Chris. How are you both doing? Thanks for joining tonight. Okay, so once the film's finished, you're then winding on the end of the backing paper onto the end of the spool, which is over this side. You can open it up like so. And then what you do is you take this flap, fold it under slightly like that. Then this, this part gets sticky when wet. So you just lick it, fold it over. And then your film is then ready for developing. Now by folding that flap under, it means that you can get your nail or the lab can get their nail under there to rip that off really easily. Check that. Right, so roll onto a reel, loading onto a reel. Uh, I've got Jobo reels here. Pattern reels are virtually identical. Okay. So this all happens in the dark, obviously. Get your nail under there, feed it out. Now this is the way I do it, okay? 
So as you're rolling that through, eventually you get to the film, which you can feel very easily in the dark. And then I snip these corners off like that. Okay. Then I'll take a bit more out like that. Feed it through, like so. And then, with my right thumb, rotating this one, put my thumb very slightly on that edge. This thumb's off the film and rotate it forward. And the left thumb goes on the film, while well, this one comes off and rotates that back. Okay. And then if you let the film hang down slightly like that, you can easily rotate the film through like so. Occasionally just pulling the film around like that. And slowly the film unravels and loads onto the reel. Sometimes it can get a little stuck if your hands are wet, if the reel's wet. And eventually, you get to this point of the reel where it's taped onto the backing paper. And then I cut that off there and roll the last bit on. Now I'm not going to do that this time because I'm going to attempt the other way of rolling it, which is, so we can get this out of here, damaging it. I'll re roll this now. I don't think this other way is going to be that different, to be honest. I think it's just more prone to problems. Have I done that wrong? No, that's right, isn't it? Okay, so if we imagine that's as is, comes out the camera. So remember, all this is happening in the dark or in a dark bag. So I think that's the easiest way to do it. The other way, which I think Graham from Sunny 16 mentioned he did it this way, was he would he rolls the whole film out first. So he takes that, rolls all this out. Like so. Then, now the reason I cut this off, just to mention that, you can either separate the film like that from the sticky tape, or take the sticky tape off the backing paper. But I've had times where I've ripped that and it's actually ripped the film as well. Not so much on, um, I don't think I've ever done it on this, on like Ilford black and white film, but I have done it on, I think it was Cine Steel film. I don't know if it's because it's thinner, but, um, so I, I always just cut it, obviously being careful in the dark. So this is the other way, once you've got your film like that, then it's just a case of loading it onto the roll. Let's see if this goes on easier without the backing paper. Anyway. And I suppose this part is just feel it's not going there. I 
But it's an alternative way of doing it. I'm not a huge fan of this actually. It seems to be getting caught up a lot more. Um, yeah, forget it. Never doing it that way again. Right. <laughs> so there's your thing. <laughs> you want 20 film. <laughs> forget it. Um, was there anything else about 120 I wanted to mention? I think that's it. Um, oh, just the number of frames that you get. So like on a 6x7 camera, you only get 10 frames. And you get 12 frames on a 6x6. Uh, and obviously the larger the frame size, the fewer number of actual images you're going to get on each roll. So that's that. Um, I shot some medium format. Let's, let's go back to this camera. I shot some medium format um, the other day in good old Coventry. Um, let's just bring that up. So here are my 10 frames from that. Um, Tara, if you're still on loan, we went out photographing uh, car parks in Coventry that are about to shut down, no doubt to be turned into more student accommodation. Um, it was a pretty overcast day, uh, very flat, not much contrast going on. So this then led to me thinking about how I'm going to print these images. Okay, and that's why I thought I'd cover a bit of split grading. So today I'm going to look at this image here. Now, um, what is split grade printing? Split grade printing is where you combine two, two different contrast levels in one print. Okay, what is contrast? Contrast is the difference between the tones in the image. And what contrast you want in your image is it's entirely subjective. It's and this isn't about what is right, it's about having control with what you do. So this is the this is my image. Um and I've already done a print of this. Here, yeah, let's just make that full screen. It's pretty shiny, it's on glossy paper. Um but as you can see. It's pretty flat. Now this was FP4 shot at 800. So you'd expect it to have a bit more contrast, but this just goes, goes to show what the light was like that day. Okay. So that was printed um, in the standard way. I made a test strip at grade two and a half. So a middle grade and it came out like that. Now I'm going to demonstrate um, split grade printing using Lightroom to start with because it's a bit easier so you can actually see a histogram just need to have a drink hold on okay so this is the starting image okay and if you look at the top right of the screen that's your, where the histogram is showing the information about the image so all this area in the highlights this is that's predominantly the sky area okay and you've got your midtones, and there's not a lot going on in the shadows and the blacks that's mainly around this area here at the top of the car park. Okay, let's just move this over here. Now, say for it, like I want to make this in, this image more contrasty. It's, it's lacking oomph at the moment. So what you can do, just switch to develop mode, is up the contrast. Okay, so if you up the contrast, that's getting more like the sort of image that I'm going for. Now, this this is obviously like a first step and dependent on what the lighting was like when you're shooting, what film you're using, how it was developed, all those factors that also affect the contrast of an image play a part in how it needs to be printed or how you want to print it. Okay, so at this first stage, I wanted to up the contrast. Now, the problem with that is, as you can see, you lose the highlights. Well, you, you, your sky starts to get blown out and you lose detail in the shadows. Okay, so if we just zoom into this area here and compare it to the lower contrast image, the details here, this is just taking a while to load, the details here get lost 
and they just disappear because they're being pushed to black. If you look at the histogram, you can see the image is being expanded out. Okay. So more of the highlights are being pushed towards white, more of the shadows are being pushed towards black. Just switch between those so you can see it. Okay. So what you can do is slowly, like bearing in mind we're doing this in the dark room. So each step you do, you've got to do test prints or you, and you've got to change your contrast each time, potentially change your exposure if you're using a color head to change your contrast um, until you get a perfect balance between your shadows and your highlights. And you can also, for example, change the exposure. So if you think, well, my highlights are getting blown out by pushing the, the contrast, I'll just give it less exposure. Of course, when you do that, you're going to then lose even more in your shadow areas. Okay. So, um, and the same vice versa. If you to increase the exposure to get more detail in the shadows, even more of your highlights are going to get blown out and you're going to lose all the detail. So split grade printing is a way of, um, it's a method of overcoming these problems in a darkroom print by printing with two different contrast filters on the same image. And by separating the low and high contrast, you can control the highlights and the shadows independently. So let's just do that digitally first. If we have a look at a low contrast image, let's just make sure that that's coming up okay. So it looks very flat, okay? But all the detail is there in the sky. And as previously, we can increase, if actually, if we just look at the histogram and compare that to this one, high contrast, you can see how it's all getting squeezed. The highlights are coming towards the middles as are the shadows. Okay, so that's a low contrast. Everything's close together. And as previously, we could increase the exposure and decrease as well. But at no point in that image have you got, well, maybe here, and say you've got pure black and a pure white. But so you would, you could use that part of the image, high contrast to control the highlights. So if we look at a low contrast, sorry, a high contrast version of it. So if we have a look at the histogram here, you can see all the information has been pushed right out towards the, the whites and the blacks. Here and here. And as before, we can decrease the exposure and increase it. So as we increase this exposure, you can see the detail in the shadows all comes through. So with a split grade, what we do is we combine this image with this image, and it means we can retain the information in the highlights, the details in the highlights, but also get fantastic contrast and detail in the shadows as well. And the beauty about this is as you increase this exposure here of the high of the high contrast image, all the highlights get completely blown out. So it has no effect on the lower contrast image. So you're just controlling the shadows at this point. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So how do you do that on um, as a dark green print? Let's switch microphones again. Let's move this one out of the way. Right, I'm going to need to do some setup now. Uh, 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 uh. Go to multicam for a second. Right, so uh, let's put the filters on the screen.
As always, if you've got any questions or comments, stick them in the, the chat or in the comments below. Okay, let's go turn the lights off, just to make sure this is all working okay. So before tonight, I got to the point where, um, you might actually notice I've got a new layout to my dark room at the moment. Instead of working with trays now, I'm gonna be working with my Nova slot processors, which I've got set up here. Um, the first one here has got developer in it, then stop, then fix, and I've got a water bath here. Quick washing for permanent prints, I then take them out to the sink to give them a proper wash. Um, and then I'm hanging my prints up here. Hopefully this makes a bit more sense and it's a bit easier to, to show the workflow. Um, so what I've got here is I've got the straight print uh, 2.5 and then this is just the low contrast uh, test strip so this is one that I'm using just to see when detail starts to appear in the sky okay and this is how far I've got I've got to that it's going to be I'm going to use that first step there so let's just set everything up here Okay, turn this light off. Make sure everything's set up okay, everything's working, kick the camera, check, that's all good. Right, um, so once you've got your first Let's just make sure that this is in focus first before we do anything. So, as always, micro focus finder. Yeah, it's still in focus. Excellent. Right. There it is. So, once you've worked out your exposure for. Um, the highlights using the low grade, we need to do the high grade, high exposure test, okay? So we just do a test strip as, as normal. And I should have marked where I want to put this. Let's just hide that behind my back. And I, I want to do it over this area here, because this is the darkest part of the image and it's where I want to retain detail. Okay, so I'm going to guess where that goes. I think it was about there, wasn't it? That'll do. It's all right, it's quite a wide test strip. So the first thing we do is an exposure at the low grade. Okay? So that's the one where you've controlled your highlights. You know the exposure for that. Then we swap over the filter the high contrast filter. And I'm going to do a test strip. Ooh. Health and safety. Tripod in the way. And the cable. Let's move that out of the way. Okay.
So there's another way of doing this, um, which is the developer, um, which is you do your two and a half grade exposure, and you get the exposure time for that, then you half the time, and you do half of it at the low grade and half of it at the high grade. And then from that, you can then tweak your two different grades um, exposure wise. And you can also change the, as with this method as well, you can change your top and lower grades. So if you do want more contrast in the shadows or in the highlights, you can, instead of using say the grade five, you'd use the grade four for the, the shadows. That um, the split timing method, um, Rachel from Little Vintage Photography has just done um, a video that's gone up on the Ilford channel where she explains that method. So check that out. It's a good place to start. Um, I just prefer this method because you can, you, you're working with like the highlights separately to begin with. Um, and sometimes like a test strip isn't the right or the easiest way to do this. Um, you want to do your, instead of doing a test strip, you want to do it all in one spot. Take that out, give it a quick rinse. So there we go. Right, I don't know how well you can see that. So if you have a look at this strip here, okay, so I've started then the whole thing at that grade there, and then this is the grade five, which is the high contrast at different exposures across that. And from this, I can then pick the, the relevant exposure for the high grade, where I still get some detail in the image, but it's got, um, the blacks are black in it basically. Now I would say I'm going to go for that one there. At this point here, just need to take this off and have a closer look at it. So I don't know how well it's coming across, but on this one here, all detail is lost in this one. But this one is still some detail there. But it's getting to like these ones you haven't got any real blacks so like in that la bottom corner there where it should be pure black it's it's very washed out and gray still so one two three steps on that okay now i'll just switch these back so we start with the low grade it doesn't matter what order you do your high and low grades in because it all it's a cumulative. Um, 
you can work with the high grade first and then do the low grade. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just making sure you get timings right for each one. So let's just turn all these off. Questions come in. Uh, was the higher contrast grade five? Yes, it was, yeah. So a full piece of paper. So I've got my low grade filter. Um, I'm actually using a grade zero on this. The zero zero is way too low for the sky. Um, so this is 6.73 seconds. And we swap the filter over. I've got the under the lens contrast filters. Um, and then, so for the high contrast, it was 13.4 seconds, so we're exposed for that. So yeah, the under the lens ones uh, just slide in a little tray. You can get, depending on your larger, some enlargers have trays that go above the lens that you get sheets of um, the contrast filters to go in. So that's it, both contrast exposed. There we go, into the developer. So depending on the image as well, you may find that when you do your first exposure um, with, the high, with the low contrast filter for the highlights, you might actually just want to do it, say like a quarter of a stop less on the timing, because then when you do the, low co the <laughs> high contrast filter, if there is anything in the highlights coming through on that, it will add to it, so it'll make it a bit darker but it will depend on the image um, and what you're after. Give that a little agitation. So at this point, hopefully, we're getting pretty close to a final image. Um, and the, the things you can do from, from here are you can increase your exposure or decrease your exposure times for the high and low contrast, <coughs> and also change the filters. Um, and after time, you kind of learn which of those you need to do uh, dependent on the image and what you're after and how much you need to do it by. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, can turn the lights on. So of course the other thing you can do as well is use um, dodging and burning. And that those that can be done during either or both of the contrast steps, depending on what's needed. 
But one, one beauty of doing split grade printing is in a lot of situations, it saves you having to do any dodging and burning. And also in more problematic areas where, so like on this print, um, there's a peg. It would be very difficult to dodge that bottom area without using a mask of some sort, uh, just because of the shape of it. So by doing the split grade, you can see it a lot better. Right, let's turn that off. Hopefully, you can see the difference. Let's, let's bring those up. That camera's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, you can you can see it. You can see the difference straight off. Um, so that was the what was that? That was the two point five grade print. And here is the split grade. I'll bring this over to a better camera. for you so as you can see a lot more contrast and not only that but there's detail which you probably can't see in that dark the shadow area there now I would probably either reduce like it's still very dark here um, I'll probably do a bit of dodging on here and this building here for anybody that knows the, the wave in Coventry like this surface here just just gleams in the light and, and that isn't coming across at all in here so I'd probably do some dodging on that um, probably during the um, the low grade phase try and get some contrast in it just to give it a bit of pop to it and also probably do a bit of dodging in the sky as well just to like some highlights coming through there but not in there but not a huge amount and this area here is very flat that's what the day was like uh, but it would be nice to try and get some detail and some interest out of there as well um, any other questions about split grey printing then uh, please do drop a comment and I think that pretty much covers it uh, for the basics. There, yeah, like I say, a couple of different ways of approaching it. Um, well, let me just show you this as well. There we go. So this is a test strip made not with a um, static piece of paper but this is made by moving the paper, okay? So if you've got an area, um, let's think of a situation, say you're, you've got a portrait, okay? And it's someone's face and they've got a highlight on their face, okay? From a bright light, um, it's this side, it's not me. Yeah. Um, doing a test strip, just wouldn't work because the contrast, the exposure changes over the face and there's only one spot where the highlight is. So what you need to do is do your exposure test just in that area. And that's done by masking off. So on this one here, you mask off everywhere apart from the area where you want to do it. And then you move the strip along for each, each exposure. Um, so to do this, I just did a little experiment using the pixelator, which is possibly another use for it. <laughs> uh, like this. I had the paper in here. Just move that out of the way. Like that. And I masked it off. And then just move the paper through for each exposure. And that enables you to um, do a test, a localized test rather than a test strip. 
which is a fairly useful technique for some images. Right. That's definitely it on test strips. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's good to be back. It's been a, it's been too long. I need to get back into the routine of this. Um, and I really want to make another video. Tara, if you're still watching, <laughs> you're in for doing the video work again. Is that okay? Um, I really enjoyed making the camera dactyl one a couple of months ago. And uh, yeah, I'd like to do another one of those. So any other questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to, you can uh, subscribe to my zine over on my website. That would be wonderful. That's not the right thing. <laughs> that one. <laughs> um, I shall catch you all soon. I'm just checking. I haven't got anything else to say. I will be back. Uh, one month is it now? It's October, isn't it? I'll be back in November at some point. Um, what have I got on the next few weeks? I'm, so tied in with this zine thing, I'm changing how I work slightly and I'm coming up with mini projects to work on that then can go in the zine and on my website. Um, so I might give a little update on that on my next broadcast. But we shall see. Till then, take care of yourself and uh, see you all soon. Goodbye.